Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters. So, inshallah, we will continue our discussion concerning the divine institution of wilaya from the Holy Quran. Now, the question is here does the Quran or does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak of a promise? A promise in which this earth will be governed by the righteous servants or by the individuals at least. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make a promise in the Quran that <coughs> this earth will have some sort of government? That this earth will have some sort of Khalifa? And we inherit this matter from Khalifa to Khalifa. <coughs> so that's the question at hand. From the picture or from the from the argument of the ahadith and nusufs of the Ahlul Bayt salam, what we do have that Rasulullah says that khalifa, that the Imams after me are twelve khalifa. But our question is: Is there not this this appointed to this somewhere found in the Quran? <coughs> of course, <coughs> during the nights of Arba'in and during other nights, we discussed that. Of course, there are lots of verses of wilayah. إِنَّمَا وَلِيكُمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ That Allah subhanahu the ayah in the Quran that says then Allah and the Messenger and وَالَّذِينَ آمِنُوا are your wali, is your, are, are your muwaleen, are your masters and your, your commanders. We look at the ayah in the Quran when Imam Ali alayhi salam for example gives charity while he is in prostration, while he is sorry, while, he's, while he was raqi', while he was bowing down. And there are several ayat, but we want to look at more different ayat. Ayat in the Quran <coughs> that usually we don't give too much heed to. Of course, one of them here, which is the ayah found in chapter 21, verse 105 in the Quran. <laughs> Now, what does this ayah mean? Do we not ponder upon such verses? Now, the translation I have here from Muhammad Asad that I, that I jotted down, <coughs> we laid it down in all the books of divine wisdom that my righteous servants shall inherit the earth. The inheritance here le points to what? Points to some sort of authority, some sort of governance on the earth. Now, as zabur what does a zabur usually mean in the Quranic context or the Quranic text or in general? A zabur usually means a collection of books, written texts, or written books. And that is, of course, what the interpreters have mentioned in this ayah. And this is, there's no argument about the zabur meaning in, in any, uh, be, be it Shia or non Shia. <coughs> in addition, we have that some tafasir tell us that al. Like if you look look at the, what it says here, it says وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ and we have written in the Zabur بَعْدَ الذِّكْرِ So if we use the interpretational method called سِيَاقُ الْآيَةِ or سِيَاقُ الْآيَةِ meaning by looking at the way the ayah flows we can somehow extract a meaning behind what this verse is trying to say. So Allah says we have written in the books after the remembrance <coughs> and usually this dhikr if you pay close attention to the ayat and the ahadith you will discover that this dhikr is none other than the Quran so Allah is saying this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and we have written in all the books and after of course the Quran that my righteous slaves shall inherit the earth. So basically, what we can say, that in addition to the Quran in which this dhikr is remembered, that, that Allah's righteous servants shall inherit the earth, in addition to the Quran, we have written in all the heavenly books that verily the inheritors of the earth will be my righteous servants. <coughs> that is the conclusion that we come to when we look at the verse in this context, Allah is trying to say, of course, that of course, in the, of course, in the Quran, in the Quran, this promise is written. 
that this earth يرثها عبادي الصالحون that my righteous servants shall inherit the earth meaning inherit the governance of the earth so when we look at the siyaq of the ayah we see that وقد كتبنا في الزبور and the zabur usually yes the zabur of Dawood alayhi salam or the psalms as it's called of Dawood but usually in the context of the Quran zabur usually refers unless specifically mentioned that it's the book of Dawood, it usually points to all the Qutb al-Samawi, all the heavenly books. In this case, doesn't that mean that every single divine book must contain this promise? Or at least a reference to this ayah? And if you look in the Old Testament, in the Psalms of David himself, you will discover that in fact there is an ayah in the Quran, in the Old, an ayah, sorry, in the Old Testament, a verse in the Old Testament that has the same almost nas, the same context as the following verse. Let me read from the Psalms of David, alayhi salam, 37, from 27 to verse 30. And pay close attention, please, to these words. They are actually very beautiful verses from the Psalms of David. Turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. Subhanallah. It's almost like a teaching of Islam. What does Islam tell you? Islam always tells you to do good. To do good, and in this case, dwell in the land forever. We can say that what this is trying to mean, or if we interpret this verse, what do we say? Dwell in the land forever means if you do good in this world, that's when you die, you will dwell forever in that humble abode, that paradise. That's when you do good, it equates to what? To that humble, eternal paradise. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. This is in the Psalms of David, chapter 37, verse number 29 of the Psalms of David, alayhi salam. Meaning what? Meaning that if we pay close attention to all the divinely books that were sent down on the prophets, this promise is found. Meaning this promise is something heavy. This is not something so small that can be decided over a shura around the saqifa. Or it's not something that can be decided among six people. Because we have during the Khilafah of Nabi Quhafa, it was a shura, a democratic vote. Then what happened right after? Abu Bakr appoints Umar ibn al-Khattab. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab places a shura between six people. And Ali, Ali Islam, denies such ways. Subhanallah. First it's democratic between the entire ummah. Then it's khilafah. Then it's democratic between six people. Isn't something that is divine, as, as something as heavy as wilaya, as divine authority and leadership, isn't something like this or should not something like this be something that is perfect? Something that is the manifestation of perfection. Something that is so intricate and detailed. Not something so simple that you can just say, let us hold a democratic vote between the ummah or between six people to come to conclusion on who the khalifa is. Now, of course, we see. Now, concerning this ayah in the Quran, concerning the imams, Ali Muslim, the imams Ali Muslim have said that this ayah is for us, for the Ali and the sons of Ali. And this also connects to the wilaya of al Mahdi al Muntar, Ajallah Ta'ala Farju Sharif, because Imam Sadiq says this ayah is a reference to the Mahdi and his companions when the Mahdi will inherit the, the governance of the earth when he appears and with him his pious companions. So you see the connection between the two. And then, of course, the righteous servants of Allah, do I need to introduce to you who are the righteous servants of Allah, as-salihun. Ar-salihun are those who trust in Allah, those who have piety, those who are sincere, those who do good and forbid wrong. And there cannot be none other 
than the Ahlul Bayt of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the Ahlul Bayt of Muhammad have been purified thoroughly through purification. They are error-free, they are infallible. So you ask yourself this, do I have to discuss who are the righteous ones? At least there is no difference of opinion that Ali ibn Abi Talib carried outstanding qualities that even Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the Imam of the Hanabila says that and he narrates in his, in his Musnad that when it comes to the companions of Rasulullah, none had khasa'is, explicit characteristics such as Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib had characteristics that none have. Ali ibn Abi Talib had characteristics that Rasulullah said, you have qualities that I do not have. You have the best <coughs> wife. Oh, Ali, you have the best sons. You have the best brother. And so on and so on. The, the beautiful hadith when Rasulullah talks to Ras Ali, 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 Ali Sam and tells them about these qualities. And this hadith, by the way, is found in both Shia and non-Shia texts. The next ayah in the Quran. The next ayah in the Quran is found in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 72. Now pay close attention to this ayah in the Quran. This ayah speaks about a heavy burden, or sorry, a heavy weight, a heavy trust, a covenant that was presented to the earth and the heavens and the mountains, but they could not accept it. Inna aradna al amanata ala al samawati wal ardi wal jibani fa abayna an yahmilnaha fa abayna an yahmilnaha. وَأَشْفَقْنَ مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا Allahu Akbar We presented, we offered the trust, our deputation and promise to thy heavens and earth and mountains. But they could not bear this burden and were too afraid to accept it. Mankind was able to hold on to it, but he was unjust to himself and ignorant in the essence and significance of this promise. What is this amana? What is this promise that's so heavy that the heavens and the earth and the mountains could not bear it? That even when man held on to it, he did not understand the significance and the essence behind this amana. The answer lies with Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn Sadiq, Shaykh al-Kulayni. Alayha al-Rahmati wa al-Radwan narrates in Kitab al-Kafi and as well as Safar and Basar al-Darajat on the authority of Ishaq ibn Ammar. He says Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam was asked about this verse and he said the trust, the promise, the covenant is the divine authority of the commander of the faithful Ali, peace be upon him. Now, those who have read the tafasir of the Ahl al-Bayt, the books in which the Ahl al-Bayt interpret the Qur'an. <clears throat> when reading this, we can come to a very beautiful conclusion. Because the ayah says, وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا It says that a man, an insan, did hold on to it, but he was ignorant in its matter. And he he was ignorant in the matter and he was oppressive as well now if we look at history who was the first person to take the rights of Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, and usurp the rights of Fatima to Zahra السلام, and do so with oppression and tyranny and ignorance because if this individual really understood wilayah, he would submit to Ali ibn Abi Talib If he truly was not ignorant in the matter of wilayah, he thought wilayah is something so simple that I can grasp from my hand. I mean, when I thought about this, I thought that this could not be anybody else but Ibn Abi Quhafa. Then I looked and looked to try to find some kind of source to be able to prove my arguments. Because everything fits in so beautifully. Because when we look at the history of these tyrants, we discover that 
they did not understand. They thought Wilaya was some kind of governance, some kind of leader. They thought Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was me, none other than a political leader who came and he ruled. They don't understand Wilaya to be something that comes from the heavens, not something that comes from below. Something that comes from Allah, not from the demons from below. So I search and subhanAllah in the same chapter in which Shaykh al-Safar narrates the first hadith when he says that, that this covenant is the covenant of Wilaya of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He narrates a different hadith and he explains it. He says, عن مفضل ابن صالح عن جابر ابن جابر ابن يزيد الجعفي عن أبي جعفر الباقر عليه السلام في قول الله تبارك وتعالى قال الولاية أن يحملها كفرا بها وعنادا وحملها الإنسان والإنسان الذي حملها ابن أبي قحافة. He says that is the ولاية the divine command and authority. They refuse and disdain this matter. Because of disbelief and remained adamant in his decision. This is concerning the heavens and the mountain and the earth. It's not something easy to accept the wilaya of al Bayt. The wilaya of al Bayt, there is a lot of secrecy that revolves around the wilaya of al Bayt. Sometimes not anybody can even handle this. I mean, you have people today, the minor miracles and merits of al Bayt, they begin to deny and begin to cast doubt upon because they don't understand, they don't have that aqidah yet. Build your aqidah from the Quran. Build your aqidah from the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt Sometimes it's hard to accept, but there are some there are some hearts, alhamdulillah, that have been tested with wilaya and they have accepted wilaya, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless those who held on to the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib Then he says, mankind held on to it. Mankind here is a reference to Ibn Abi Qahafa. And the reference here is Basar al-Darajat, page 96, hadith number 3. And of course, when we read in the Quran, فَأَبَيْنَ أَبَانَ الشَّيْءِ means he refused or disliked this, this thing, disliked or neglected or disdained. So now, we look at the first ayah that's found <coughs> concerning the inheritance. Then we saw that the verse is also found in uh, the Psalms of David. Then we look at this ayah here, which is found, we said in uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 72. And now we want to look at another ayah in the Quran to connect it to the Imams in general. And to connect it to the, to the incidents that happened in Samarra, because you see, the enemies of Ahl al -Bayt, now until Imam Mahdi will, will appear, <coughs> they will continue to try to to distinguish the nur of Allah. So we want to discuss what is the nur of Allah. Now, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا Believe in Allah, the messenger, and the nur, the light in which we descended, in which we sent down. Now, what do the mukhalifin, what do Ahlul Ammah, Ahlul Jama'ah say about this verse? Let me read to you some of the, the conclusions that I read from, the, from them analyzing this verse. They say that this nur, this light, since it is a light of guidance, it was a light of guidance that was sent down with Rasulullah, that this light points to the Qur'an. Now, <coughs> our discussion is such. Okay, we will accept and we will uh, surrender even that this nur is the Qur'an. First of all, the context of the verse though. Aminu bin nur alladhi anzalna. Have belief in the light in which that we descended, the light in which we had sent down. Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Or let's go back to Rasulullah. Rasulullah says, Inni tariku fikum al thakalain or al thakalain ma in tamasaktum bihuma lanta dhulu baadi abada. 
كتاب الله وعترتي أهل بيتي رسول الله says that I have provided you these two weighty things that if you hold on to them you will not go astray and these two will not separate until they meet at the pond of Kothar keep this hadith in mind and keep the hadith of the nur being the nur of wilaya or sorry being the nur of the Quran and we're going to take a break and inshallah when we come back maybe you'll be able to get to a conclusion yourself on who really is the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sent with Rasulullah. So inshallah stay tuned.